Today is the 9th of June 2022 and I'm here maintaining the Islington Garden. Most of the trees don't look too bad. The pines have a lot of new candles. Some of them look a bit tired but they're not entirely dead. They were struggling like this pine. Look at the new candles on this. This is looking quite good really. Some signs of indulgence on the branches. This is the one that is looking weak, but even this tree has got some new candles coming, so it's worth waiting to see if it can be saved. This is the tree that suffered when we first planted it in 2017 or 18, and the watering system was not put on for six months. This tree, there are some problems with the fluffy scale. But otherwise it's okay. Horn beams are not too bad. Tracy is pruning that. Today is the 9th of June and I'm up in London looking after this Zen garden that we made about four or five years ago and as always I do a task and then I suddenly realize that it would be very useful to have shown it to you as a YouTube video. So you see all that pruning that we've done. This tree was about three feet outside the limits and I already have filled a bag full of it, the uh, pruning. So this tree has been restored. Although I call these garden trees, they are in effect large bonsai. So this is a hornbeam. They are grown on the nursery from nothing. Our own produced trees from the nursery. And it's at least, I would say, 1.2 meter tall. Now let me show you another one. This I haven't pruned yet. And if you come here, we look at this one. And this tree is 1.8 meter tall. And this hasn't grown as much as the other one, but it still needs a prune. So what do I do when I have a garden tree situation like this? Although the shape is there, mm -hmm. it's about six inches too uh, wide. So I go around the traditional beehive shape. I work very fast, you know. I can do this tree in about 10 minutes. Anyone else would take about half a day to prune it. <laughs> So the main object here is to show the trunk. You can't see the trunk on this tree. So I'm going to pull it so that you begin to see the shape of the outline and also see the trunk. There are some pests in here, white fly, you need to spray this. So garden trees need to be constantly cared for. And if you come closer, at the moment you can't see the trunk of this tree, so what I'm going to do is aim to show the trunk. If you don't see the trunk, it's just going to be a bush. And because we want it to look like a proper garden tree, we've got to aim to show the trunk as much as possible. So if you take a look now, you can't see the trunk, but by the time I've finished with it, you should be able to see the trunk. If you can't see the trunk, then I don't think it has been so successfully pruned. And these little sucker shoots, they also need to be pruned out. This again hides the trunk. So anything that is hiding the trunk, we're going to take off. Considering that this it's growing right in the middle of London. I know it is surrounded by apartments, but it still gets a lot of disease. And the disease that I find on this tree is a type of white fly that is flying around. So I may have to spray this as well. So apart from keeping the overall shape, I'm going to make sure that the layers are maintained 
and I'm going to make sure that I show much more of the trunk. So we'll show another clip after I've done the whole tree. So this is what I continue to do. Go around, take all the long shoots off. So this is now June. I did prune it when I came in March and that was almost like a winter pruning before the tree came into leaf. And I took off all the excess growth. So one more prune towards the autumn is all that this needs. So a big tree like this is pruned twice or possibly two, three times a year. So there you go. I will then show you what I've done after I've completed pruning the tree. So 10 minutes later and we've taken off quite a bit. See the bag is full and you see you can now see the trunk should be able to see the trunk. That's the secret of pruning these garden trees. Always be able to see the trunk, as with bonsai, and to see different layers between successive branches. That's how the tree works. So this is a large Bouvernensis pine, and we did do some pruning earlier in the year. And in maintaining this tree, I'll just make sure that there are no adelgids. But because last year we pruned some of the tips off, if you come closer, this is a very good case study for back budding. A lot of people don't understand what back budding is. So you look at this from this old wood and all these little sh new shoots or candles which have grown. This is what we call back budding on the old wood. Wherever you look on this tree, you'll find a lot of back budding. Everywhere you look, look at that. You see how it's back buds there, back buds there on really old wood. So this is a good sign. So what I do is that instead of letting the candle grow, if you remove all the candle, it will force back budding. But if I want the things to become a branch, I leave it. But because this is a fairly mature tree, it is as well to take the candles off. You can take it off completely. A lot of people laugh at me he's saying that, Peter Chan doesn't know what he's doing, but I do know what I'm doing. So by doing this, believe me, you'll get the back budding. And the proof of the pudding is the result. You see how it's back budding there. You know, if you didn't do that, it would not back bud. And of course, I don't have complete control over the tree because I visit this garden only maybe twice or perhaps three times a year. So whenever I come, I do what is needed. And at this time of the year, it is back budding that I want to encourage. So I take if I don't take the entire candle off, I take half the candle off. Okay, so there you go. So we're going to go through all the pines and check it over like that. I'm now going to show you how I prune these maples, Acer. This, these are dissectums. This is Akashidari, the red weeper. These were trees that I imported from Japan back in 1993. And they are at least, I would say, 50, 60 years old. So they've been here for five years and the trunks have hardly thickened. And what again I need to do is I try to show the trunk and layer it as much as possible. I've already started working on this one. That one I haven't started yet. When I do that, I will show you exactly what I do. I need to introduce tears into that structure. So I'll just show you how much I've taken off. I was going to leave it, but I did take a lot off. So you can see what a lot of branches I have taken off, quite a lot. So we can now see the trunk of the tree, see the structure. And that is how you would prune that one. Now when we come to the other one, you can see that you can't see the trunk. But by the time I finish with this one, you should be able to see the trunk. So this great big dissectum, you can see it's a large tree, but very bushy. So I will show you how much I prune by leaving the prunings on the ground. But I literally have to thin it out so that it doesn't look so dense. And I need to create spaces between the branches. So although it may look very nice, we have to bite the bullet as we say and uh, create some structure in the tree. Again the principle is to show the trunk, a dome shape and that's all we do.
then the principle is to show the trunk. It's very dense. With trees like this, you get a feel for it. There's no real way I can teach you what to do. Except to say that I keep trying to look for the trunk and if I can't see the trunk I need to remove some branches so that you can see the trunk. And if a maple is growing strong you don't worry about pruning it hard. It will grow again. And we always say that summer pruning is very good because whatever cuts you make the cuts heal very quickly. So summer is a very good time to prune maples. Contrary to what people tell you, <clears throat> winter pruning is something I don't do much with maples. You see, now if you come this side, you can see the open structure of the tree. Can you see that beautiful S shape? That is what I want to encourage. Now this pad is very heavy, so what do I do? I will go in and pin it. See how I thin that? So, as I say, you've got to be bold. You have to be bold. And if a branch kicks back on itself, you take that out. Dissectums have the habit of kicking back as well because they have these very twisted, curly growth. The dissectum, the Japanese call shidari, means a weeping tree. So, aka shidari means a red weeper. See how I thin that one, and then I got to ask myself, do I need these branches which are hanging down here? I don't think I need these. So take them off. The autumn colour of this tree is really spectacular. So that side is thin. If you come this side now, you see this side is thin, but not this side. So I need to thin this one. create a space between that chair and this chair. So although this is a weeping tree, you can create the clouds and the pads. I know it's difficult, but it's possible. See how much I've taken off already. So you can see through the tree, that's the trick. See, now you can see the shape of the tree. No longer just a block or a bush. So very dense here, so I'm going to take some of this out. Make sure I leave the crown so the crown becomes quite obvious, dome shape. And of course, if you don't keep trimming the inside, the inside twigs do die. So now you can see the structure of the tree, and you can look through it and you see how much I've removed from there. So that is enough. So that is how I would prune this maple. So I'm continuing to prune these garden trees and this pine I thought I'd show you what's happening. Again a good example of breaking bud from the old wood and I couldn't show you a better example than that. Look at all the old wood and look at these buds coming out from there. And this is because I keep removing the candles. You see all these new candles that are there. I deliberately cut them all off to get bud break. The way I style this tree is I got the structure and once I get the structure I then remove the the candles like that 
and then I will fill the pad up. So this is the plan. So all these long candles get pruned back so that it forms a nice round tight pad and you don't have to worry about bud break because you see how the buds are breaking from really really old wood really old wood you get bud breaking back so all these old wood you can see there there so when people tell me that pines don't bud back from old wood they are wrong 